I know a girl whose veins are red. Would you like the balls? This is ready. That will be ready. What we're going to need in a minute is the ancestral colander to strain the pasta. This belonged to my grandmother, and I believe it may have been her mother's before her. So it could be. I mean, it could be a hundred years old. This I just don't know. A lot of people inherit a Rembrandt or a big house in Scotland. I get a, a colander. And from my other grandparents on the other side of the family. Uh, here we go. I inherited this baked bean, sorry, not baked bean, runner bean slicer. See, you push them through there and they come out stringy. Blunt is a bastard and completely useless these days, but, you know, it's an heirloom. Right. Right, this is working very well. The clock has just passed uh, 10 minutes, so we can stop that and put it away. Turn the bacon right down, it's starting to get a bit crispy, that's wonderful. Now, with the pasta, this is where the little jug becomes important, put a tiny splash of that water, I would say one and a half egg cups full, in there. No more than that. Then, I'm just going to do this out of shot, strain the pasta, in grandma's colander, toss it backwards and forwards, do the colander and the pan a bit. Now some people say you should now douse it in cold water to stop it cooking, or rinse it in hot water to get rid of starchiness, but keep it hot. I actually find that the slight stickiness of the pasta is good for the finished event. Put it back on the heat just for a moment. Just to dry off that bit of excess moisture. That bacon is looking fantastic. Fry that bacon. Oh, you don't even need to tell you when bacon is fried. I mean, it looks like fried bacon. Pasta. Dried egg. Now, what we're going to do now is put the pasta in the pot that had the bacon in. Don't put the bacon in the pasta one. Put the pasta in the bacon one, because the bacon pan has got lots of nice juices and stuff in it. So we'll turn off, uh, which is the one at the back, is that one. Right, in goes the pasta. Possibly hadn't uh, dried that out quite enough. Stir it up so that the bacon bits are mixed up with the pasta. Everything is nice and hot, remember. There are bits escaped, never mind. Can I get it back? Let's see, this is a bit of a test as well. Yes, that's nice and al dente, that bit of pasta. I'm not going to get it, am I? I can feel from my knife point that it's still slightly firm. Hey, ow. Okay, heat off. Very important. The flame is gone, but remember the pan is still hot. The sides of the pan are hot. The base of the pan is very hot. The pasta and the bacon in the pan are nice and hot and mixed up together. Now, this is the tricky bit. Will it work? Four times out of five it does, but I expect it will be a balls up on this occasion. Tip your mixture swiftly into that pan, stirring as you go. Whoa! Get in. You don't want it to scramble, or it, has, it might have scrambled a tiny little bit, I don't know, that looks quite good. You've got a coating of eggy loveliness all over your pasta with just a little hint of it going fluffy at the edges. Superb. Right. Water that you took from the pasta dish. Put some of that in, actually not as much as I said, about that much. One egg cup full. This just helps spread the mixture around a bit, coat everything. Yeah, yummy. Right, I've had a plate in the oven. Let's see what it's like. Roughly what it should look like. You might want to arrange it on the plate a little more artistically. A bit of penne, there's a bit of bacon on there and a bit of eggy stuff. The good thing about using penne rather than spaghetti, apart from that it's easier to eat, the juice gets inside the tubes, which is nice. Hold on. Mm -mm. Yeah, 
Yeah, not bad at all. And it's half past eight, my missus hasn't come home, so that means two portions for me. She might have left me, of course. <laughs>